Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kaya. Um, uh, today, I'm going to talk about you know, uh, the revitalization from start with talent uh, that I have been working with Charlie Lime River and Trevor Ireland um, at a few years. Um, well, um, I'm a final year PhD student and uh, currently on the job market. So, <laughs> so today I'm going to uh, start with my uh, talk by introducing my research interest after my PhD. Uh, well, um, so I'm interested more in the interior structure and the chemistry of rocket so planet. Well, around the table, there has been a lot of parallels in this area. And such as uh, Sarah Seeger, uh, Lisa Rogers, uh, Diana Alessia, yeah, it's clear. And uh, Jonas Fontenay, uh, Gagula, Kim Utbang, and Lee Zong, and uh, Carol Zong. And of course, there are many other people I have yet been to put it here. And also, uh, some young and naive guys like me trying to squeeze in and to see if there's still some left over of the dinner. And or even uh, some good food that I have yet been served. Okay, <coughs> for modeling exoplanetary interiors, uh, we need to two uh, principal constraints at least the planetary mass, the years, and the total stellar bounces. So, in this talk, I'm focusing on uh, discussing the total stellar bounces because this has been overwhelmingly popularly uh, used in the preliminary uh, in the current studies. For example, these keywords from the title, from stellar chemistry, using stellar bounds proxies, uh, using stellar composition, and from stellar analysis. However, planetary bond composition is not identical to whole stellar balances, especially for non-refractory elements. That has been evident by our observation of the solar system and by comparing the terrestrial planet to see a contrast as, as the proxy for the sun. And also a lot of other studies in this topic and a more extensive comparison between various contrasts. So this is basically tell us the complex processes of forming rocky planet is are essentially a process of losing volatiles. So if it's correct, my diagram is pretty simple and straightforward. So I plot the Earth to some of the ratio as a function of increasing elemental conducive temperature. Then everything for the refractor elements will be identical essentially between the planet Earth and the Sun. And for the moderate level of volatiles, they will be deflated in a systematic manner for their volatility. So now the question is, can we quantify this trend rather than just using this intuitive comparison without uncertainties associated with it? So this leads to uh, the first part of my PhD work, uh, that is to uh, determine the Bokker's composition with uncertainties by combining and compiling a large set of uh, later heterogeneous literature values for primitive mental composition and the core composition. And in using our new estimate of the core mass fraction that has been constrained from the seismological and astronomical measurements, and to combine the primitive mantle composition and the core composition and to get the bunkerous composition with uncertainties. And we believe this, bunk, um, this work has usefully calibrated our current best knowledge of the bulk composition of the planet Earth and that it could be used to compare with other planetary bodies. So, um, yes, that's but including the first sum. So, how, how can we determine that? So, this diagram shows uh, the CA converted boundaries as x axis and y axis is solved for the spectral boundaries. So, everything along this diagonal line, they are essentially identical between the two data. And for the elements above the line, like the local gases, they are substantially deflated in CF contrast. And for the elements below the line, like lithium, it's definitely in the sun, but well preserved in the CF contrast. 
And for the elements aligned here, they have no observed photospheric lines, but have no photospheric abundances. So based on the complementarity of abundance between sea contrast and the solar photosphere, and we use the latest estimates for the deep two data size and to redetermine the total solar abundances actually here. And the lower panel shows the, uh, the yellow panel shows the variation of our estimates and uh, uh, the right flow and right uh, directions the distribution of our reference data. Right. Okay, now then we can replace this simple diagram to our real data. So here, from the zoom in uh, part, we can see these refractor elements there in sort of have higher uh, condensation temperature. And they are essentially identical between the planet Earth and the Earth Sun. But for the moderately volatiles, they are shown as gruntals, they are deflated systematically, and for the gruntals, the rapidly highly volatiles, they are deflated substantially while scanning around the lower region of the TC. So we replot this diagram uh, for the elements with TC above 500 Kelvin and in the log to log scale, and we can see this well constrained trend. <coughs> so we fitted a joint model to this trend and get our devolatilization pattern. And we also determined a uh, devolatilization temperature, temperature, and that uh, we interpret as properly the highest temperature that we experience as the material is being zone of the Earth. And the lower two panels shows OC and the cumulative atmosphere of this best state. Well, for exoplanet chemistry, we only need to worry about certain elements. For example, carbon, sulfur, oxygen, sodium, iron, nickel, silicon, magnesium, calcium, and aluminum. Because these elements account for about 99% of the mass of the chemistry planet. So, when applying this devolatilization algorithm to our century AB system, and we can uh, compute uh, their, some of the, uh, the key element ratios, such as citro ratio, magnetic silicon, and iron to silicon ratio. And combining these key element ratios, that can tell us the first order minority of the planet, or presumably we call the upper Earth in the upper zone of this system. Well, and then we, we apply this step, uh, this algorithm to other more planetary systems. And uh, by assuming this chemical system for the mantle and coal, and we have been able to compute the mantle and coal composition as well as the coal mass fraction for the potential rocky exoplanets that are particularly in the subhuman stellar having zones around these kind of stars. Yeah. And as a verification, and we also use this algorithm to our protosun, and we reproduce the model Earth. And we produce this amount of composition. And then we compare with the independent determination for the city Earth as well as other determinations. So, and we found these results are already, already consistent with this inter, uh, independent determinations and including the commas fraction. Uh, so, the take home message here, I'm going to finish. The planetary bond composition is not identical to how the stellar abundance is, especially for non refractive elements. And the Earth's to some devolatilization pattern can be served as the first order chemical relationship between the right planet and their host stars. And the geochemical assumptions in the prevalent exoplanet interior models should be revised accordingly <coughs> to better constrain the interior structure and chemistry of the right Thank you.